Please, we have very few soldiers here. Kenneth, this voiceover officially makes up for all the Dutch tilts in Thor 1. Ah! All right, stop! Saving your bro. We have a hope. And with that, Loki became an honorary Avenger for a few minutes. That's all you have to do, right? Pay forward an Iron Man quote. Any thoughts that the Hulk would be the answer are squashed in less than five minutes, quickly establishing that Thanos has no one single equal. Oh, Heimdall. 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 Yeah, it just, it doesn't work with mononyms. Time to bond it up, I guess. Also, that was the exact moment we knew this was going to be a different kind of film. <laughs> we'll never be. Ooh, no response needed. Because what does it say about you if you can kill a god? No resurrections this time. And it was at this point that my lifelong buddy Alex turned to me and expressed that it was probably good we didn't bring his six-year-old as planned. But Thanos finally got to exact punishment on Loki after his failure in Avengers 1, and also let us know that said villain that kicked off the reason for the Avengers even existing is nothing compared to Thanos. Composer Alan Silvestri's ethereal space score. I'm into it. Thanos is coming. Who? All right, so let's talk about our protagonist intro. Oh, you thought Thanos was the antagonist? No, 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 no. He's the first character introduced by his underling, his face shrouded in darkness, teasing his reveal. Like a ragdoll, he picks up one of the strongest people we know in this universe and toys with the other strongest character in this universe just to see what he can do, ultimately knocking him unconscious. He murders a beloved character, has his quest set out before him, and is more or less the only thing anyone even talks about leading up to the title card. This is Thanos' movie. Hugging. Ooh, have to love the building sound of the ship creating an atmosphere of complete dread like it's part of the score throughout this masterful long take that really pulls you into Tony's perspective. There's your spidey sense. And I'll say I know you were all mad it wasn't mentioned in Homecoming, but you're all forgetting this scene from Civil War. Oh God, I need you to cause a distraction. Holy we're all gonna die! Cool headedness from the guy in the chair. What's matter with you kids? You've never seen a spaceship before? We can't all be watcher informants, Stan the Man. <laughs> Modesty. Hear me and rejoice. You are about to die at the hands of the children of Thanos. It says a lot about Thanos that Ebony Maw, one of the most powerful villains we've ever seen in the MCU, is basically Thanos' hype man. It's like a game to him, the way he repeats the same speech and how he silences Thor earlier so he doesn't ruin the atmosphere. Dude, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizards. <laughs> oh, Tony. What would we do without you? Yep, bleeding edge armor, now with no blood. Tony, you okay? How we doing, good man? Really, really good, really good. Honesty. Teamwork, with just a slight glance from Strange, I might add. Cloaky to the rescue. Uh, Mrs. Stark, I'm being beamed up. Don't pretend like Peter knows anything about Star Trek if he's just barely seen Empire. But as we've established, Star Trek is always a win. <laughs> Longer invited to my wedding. Saving a new buddy gets you some generosity. Too high up, you're running out of air. <gasps> yeah. That makes sense. Oxygen lessons, altitude lessons, icing problem lessons? Iron Spider. I'm going to. I was just starting to get over Jarvis and start liking Friday. It does take a little bit of Tony's God mode offline, though, which is needed. Yeah, you like that, don't you? Yeah, you know why this tone exists is something you recognize? Do ya? Rehire James Gunn. Don't care. Don't care. Watch IDAP's video if you need convincing. Rehire James Gunn. Don't care if it makes you look dumb. People will respect you for listening to your audience. Now that that's out of the way, yeah, Guardians. Gotta give the Russos credit for capturing the feel of the Guardians with color palette change and obviously a little rubber band man. Yeah. Also, space. No coordinates, just space. So, Guardians. Quick, no exposition storytelling. Gamora is softening up to Peter's ways even more than when we left her in volume two. All right, Guardians, don't forget, this might be dangerous, so let's put on our mean faces. <laughs> Groot, eye roll, and Mantis mean face. How the hell is this dude still alive? He is not a dude. You're a dude. This is a man. While I don't disagree, I feel I should remind you that Peter also survived some time in space. It's like a pirate had a baby with an angel. That's fair. I'm not 100% sure what Mantis is doing. <laughs> Wait, is she being a praying mantis? Whatever, but each guardian conveys their personality with how they respond to Thor. Peter, Rocket, and Drax have weapons drawn, Gamora is ready to draw hers, and Groot is just playing his game. It stabbed me in the eye, so I had to kill her. It's life that was not, I guess. Round and round. A little now classic Ragnarok Thor. You're imitating the god man. Oh, I'm not. <gasps> he just did it again. This is my voice. <laughs> Thank God for Chris Pratt. 
Where we have to go is Nibidalia. That's a made-up word. Who was made up? Ha! <laughs> Every time I hear that, it blows my mind for the first time again. So true. Love. Hey, just like in his picture. Yep. Oh man, that's a beautiful beard win and some beautiful hair. A beautiful nomad. Finally, some real teamwork in this team movie. And from the Rogue Avengers, OG plus Falcon. We don't want to kill you, but we will. You'll never get the chance again. Well... One way or another, the path that we're on leads to Thanos. Why did Gamora go with the team headed to nowhere knowing Thanos would be there? Well, because she knew he'd be there. He was going to get to her one way or another, and honestly, the alternative of Thanos using Quill to get to her was worse than just asking Quill to kill her. More love. Hi, Drax. <laughs> That's three comedic wins for Mantis. Just in case you're keeping track, Pom Clementiev. Drax does get half of that last one, though. Must have pulled Tobias right out of the shower. Magnificent! 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 Eight seconds, steals the scene. More Benicio in four, please. This is I sense in your daughter. Ooh, what a manipulative trick. It's either a messed up way of revealing to Gamora that she does actually care for him in some way, or how I see it, more of a cathartic experience for her. The release she'd feel knowing he can't hurt her anymore. Still, it develops his character beyond murdering Madman. There's a deleted flashback scene that actually nails this point home, but you have to remember that Gamora, right or wrong, was on his side for a long time. She was a bad guy, and before she could really reconcile what had actually happened to her, I'm sure she did grow to love the monster that raised her. Relationships, even oppressive, abusive, and sadistic ones are complex. So, murdering madman plus Stockholm Syndrome propagator. Alright, so, yeah. Anyone with a functional brain knows Thanos is just messing with them, but would he be sadistic enough to let Peter kill her just for the torture fun of it all? Maybe? When did Ross get Bizarro Jason Statham on his team? Oh, by golly, it's one of the writers, Stephen McFeely. Earth just lost your best defender. Man, that'll get you right in the gut. Steve never stopped loving his buddy Tony. And predominantly, I'd say Tony is Earth's best defender. Except for that time he almost got Pepper killed. Oh, and created that robot that tried to extinct the world. Or brought a teenager to a superhero fight. Or created the Mandarin. Or tried to kill Cap. Wait, what was I saying? You guys really look like crap. I'm sorry, have you seen Cap's hair and beard? And Nat's a blonde now. And who are you to talk with that busted sp- Oh, right, this is literally every person responsible. Too soon? This is awkward. I think you look great. Compliments, also flirting. There's an Ant-Man and a Spider-Man. Wasp and Mantis now, too. Technically, there was a yellow jacket for a bit, but I mean, you're in love with a Black Widow. I know someone. But who, Cap? The anticipation is killing me. How will we ever know? Turn that down. I want to know who... Oh... I like Black Panther music. I'm sure it's worse than this, but that looks like lidocaine feels when it's injected. I imagine Doc isn't feeling that numbing feeling after, though. Also, for the record, the Russos acknowledge the Marathon Man is its safe inspiration of the scene, and it totally took the wind out of my joke. Lame. Wow, you are seriously loyal piece of hardware. Loyalty. Yeah, uh, speaking of loyalty... Loyalty. I'm here. What did you just say? <laughs> just noticing that the cloak is mirroring Tony's movements. Did you ever see this really old movie, Aliens? I mean, it's a little more alien resurrection than aliens, but you guys actually did it a little more scientifically than Ripley. If the blood melts the glass, the hole would just get bigger and bigger, right? Also, last time I checked, Ripley wasn't Spider-Man. <laughs> Ebony Wilmaw having a rough day. Or should I call him Ebony Thaw? Or Ebony Raw? Shivery Maw? Doctor Strange. Oh, you're using your made-up names. Um... I'm Spider-Man then. All names are made up, Peter. Okay, why is Strange's hair moving now? Strange's hair is the key. Solved it. We can, that's it. We can all go home now. Thanks. No, I say we take the fight to him. Doctor, do you concur with me? Man, is that a catch me if you can reference? Deep cut if so. You're an Avenger now. Listen to that musical cue. Your planet was on the brink of collapse. I'm the one who stopped that. This scene does double duty of slowly helping us understand why Thanos thinks he needs to balance the universe, while also confirming that he himself is utterly deranged and unbalanced. I was a child when you took me. I saved you. Not in a get this man some help sort of way, but a so completely narcissistic, egotistical, and deluded that he's actually convinced himself that kidnapping someone from a world where he killed half the population is saving them. That's Hannibal-level brutal. And another genius manipulation by Thanos, since Gamora already feels responsible for Nebula's robot parts, since they were a result of Nebula losing fights to Gamora. Thanos is just a, 
the latest in a long line of bastards, and he'll be the latest to fill my vengeance fate. Wills it so? There's actually some truth in that, and you could argue had he gone for the head. Either way, love this. Thor balancing the line between Ragnarok Thor and guy who has lost everything and everyone. He gave you his eye. Nah, he gave me a hundred credits. I snuck into his room later that night and stole his eye. Rocket doing what Rocket do. I tell you, it's a good thing this side quest didn't have a casino. Giant Peter Dinklage is always a win. Well, it wouldn't be an Avengers movie if good guys didn't fight other good guys before they know they're on the same side. Honestly, what this does well is show us that the Guardians can actually hold their own when needed against the Avengers best. I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? Tell me where the girl is, or I swear to you, I'm gonna punch for this little freak. Let's do it. Don't call us plucky. We don't know what it means. Where is the Soul Stone? You should do one better. Why is the Soul Stone? Favorite cameo in the MCU so far, though I was disappointed it's not Hugo Weaving. Still. Tears. They're not for him. Ooh. Learning that not only is he not going to fail, not only is he capable of love and that he loves you, which would be confusing enough, realizing that even as much as he loves you, he cares more about balance or whatever. Gamora wears it on her face expertly. Love is in quotes because for the purposes of the movie, sure, whatever, the stone recognizes that Thanos thinks he loves her. But abusing your forcefully adopted children their entire lives is not love no matter how much you admire their fighting style. And throwing someone off a cliff to serve your own purpose pretty much precludes the ability to love them, misguided or not. Gamora does say as much. No, this isn't love. And I think and hope that we all get that she's right. And narratively, it's still a nice contrast to Cap's one life is too many. One life cannot stand in the way of defeating him. But it should. We don't trade lives, Vision. But just so we're clear, this, this ain't love. This ain't love. This ain't love. This ain't love. And dude, that's brutal. And awful. Also, Julia wanted to turn it off after this happened. So mission accomplished, Russos. Ooh, that blending of the Avengers theme with a touch of Black Panther's theme. More BFF hugging. Why didn't you just reprogram the synapses to work collectively? Because we didn't think of it. To be fair, it was like three whole years ago. Hey, I just realized, Bucky and Falcon back together again. Even Thanos has got a gimmick now. Get this man a shield. They must not have heard him. He said shield. Buddy, you're in space. All you got is a rope and a Hi, I'm Thor. Have we met? I'm the god of hammers. I mean thunder. More power, Robert. Some lines you just ding. Also, Chris Hemsworth's recovery team. That's literally it. I just like to point out that when Thor mentioned his hammer was forged in a dying star, I always thought it was more symbolic. But nope, actual star. Mbaku. That's right. Sometimes characters get wins just for being on screen. They surrender. Not exactly. Optimism. Sometimes I forget that they can run like that, and it never ceases to put a smile on my face. More importantly, I love that the two leaders lead by example and are not only on the front lines, but in front of the front lines. It'll kill you. Only if I die. Yes. That's what killing you means. <laughs> I'll leave it to Tyrion to really clarify things for you. What was that about Chris Hemsworth's workout routine? I don't know, the logic of Thor being able to withstand a level of heat that's being used to melt indestructible metal that will be super duper magical and powerful after casting, but hey, he's a god. What do I know? Dude's committed to the cause. All right, that's awesome. A little ingenuity, a little self-sacrifice, and most importantly, Groot finally doing something other than being a punk teenager. Something that wasn't easy, something that matters, and ties us back into Empire one more time. Thor to the rescue! Epic Avengers theme crashing in just as it seems all hope was lost. And that definitely looks like the Bifrost, the colors, the pattern symbol on the ground. That bodes well for the future. Eitri did say, In theory, it could even summon the Bifrost. <laughs> you guys are so screwed now! Ragnarok buddies! Where's Korg? Oh, right. Just a little more yep. You're much more of a Thanos. Perceptivity? I take it the Ma's dead. Yeah, unless his last name is Skywalker. That is some slick teamwork. And let's talk about how awesome this amount of teamwork is and the fact that they clearly went with Star-Lord's plan since he really is the planner in the MCU. They all work together utilizing each of their individual strengths, including comedic timing. Gotcha with the kid. Boom. Uh. To actually subdue and immobilize the Mad Titan. And the thing that is their undoing is unquestionably anti-teamwork. 
It's maybe not an appropriate reaction, but it's realistic. Logic, reason, the universe, that all gets pushed out when you deal with loss like this. And he's been through it these past few days. Committing to and then attempting to kill Gamora and then this. And it's not even the first time Peter's acted irrationally when he found something terrible like this out. And it sets up how perfectly each member of the Pseudo Avengers was to taking Thanos down. One weak link and it was all over. <laughs> okay, there are some cool villains. You know how I feel about Vader and Joker and Voldemort. But holy crap, Thanos just threw a moon at Iron Man. <laughs> yes, sweet callback to Guardians of the Galaxy 1. You okay? okay? Notice you've copied my beard? <laughs> Friendship. Okay. That was apparently ad libbed. I am Groot! I am Steve Rogers. <laughs> Politeness is only Steve Rogers can pull off. I know I've been laughing a lot, but man, this is like the seventh or eighth time and it's delivered so perfectly and so in character. She's on the field. Take it. Ooh, solid deception and a good plan from the Black Goons. Remember when she said this? Where's the other friend? He will pay for his life with yours. No! I agreed with the theory that Hulk was maybe a little scared of Thanos, but I get that he's done fighting for Bruce, and what that does is give Bruce an arc to fight for himself. I thought you were a formidable machine. Cap to the rescue! Resourcefulness. That's really gross. And yeah, for the record, she got ripped in half. Crazy that they throw that CGI in there even though it happens too fast for anyone to see at full speed. It's just us weirdos slowing stuff down to catch it. Yeah, Muppets. Sorry, I can't remember anybody's names. And Spidey just saving everybody, all his new friends. Okay, you'd think Strange would have learned not to send anyone into the mirror dimension after last time, but holy crap, did Thanos just punch through the mirror dimension? Like, he just shattered it. <laughs> that look on Thanos' face. Like, what is, oh, it's just butterflies. And it's at this point that it starts to slowly dawn on you. This video is almost over and he's nowhere near the end of the movie. This, <gasps> this is a part one. I couldn't help it, I'm sorry. Once the onslaught of angry comments about me tricking you start flooding in, I'll change the title. But I figured you notification squatters would appreciate the irony? Nah? Anyway, yes, this movie was simply too dense to fit into one video, and so I was forced to split it into. You could say I removed 50% with a snap of my fingers? Too soon? Not soon enough? Next week will be the conclusion to this video, plus a bonus video with some of my theorizing that I still didn't have room for, and maybe my lessons animation taught us, but... Ooh, that's three videos in one week that I'm supposed to technically be taking a half week for. No promises other than part two of this Infinity War video. Thank you for your patience. Splitting this up allowed me to not hold back and cut very little out because there's so much awesome happening in this film. It won't become a regular thing, but like you'll hear me say towards the end next week, this is a moment in film. Thanks, guys.